What's going on YouTube? OCD for EDC here. What I've got for your face balls today. We're going to be talking about Spyderco as well as Blade HQ and all the exclusives that they have come out with over the last couple of months. It's pretty impressive. There's a bunch of them, so we're just going to get right into it. First and foremost, uh, they dropped a set of Sage 5 lightweights that are super cool, uh, sticking with the theme of jade uh handle coloring now because the lightweight is frn instead of g10 uh these they're actually referring to these as mint uh instead of jade but they are very very cool and the sage 5 is one of my favorite uh models definitely a good one the compression lock so the sage series uh you know is this uh leaf shaped blade the handle shape is the same across all of the Sage series, but the lock design is different. So there's a Sage 1 uh, through 5, and there is a liner lock, uh, there's a back lock, and the Sage 5 is a compression lock. Now, the standard CMEs do fit the Sage 5 as well as the lightweight. Um, so, you know, you can put uh, multiple different uh, CME options on here, but these happen to be the two new blade hq exclusives in cpm m4 we have a coated blade as well as an uncoated blade uh this is a i think they're calling it like a titanium nitride coating uh, but it has some shine to it very very cool coating and looks fantastic and then you also have the coated hardware and clip it's a bummer that they didn't do the liners uh, but you know spider co has a bad uh well, it's probably not Spyderco. It's honestly uh, the uh, dealers because they will coat the liner uh, and stuff. But uh, yeah, some of the dealer exclusives, they choose to leave the liners, which, you know, if you're putting a CME on there, then it doesn't really matter because you can't see it anyway. So yeah, that would be my recommendation. Put a CME on there and then you won't be able to see it anyway. So, but there you go. Those are the two Sage 5s uh, new from Blade HQ. Then we have another FRN model, again, CPM M4 blade steel, and this is the Native 5. Awesome, awesome knife, mid back lock, super comfortable in hand, US made. Uh, if I didn't say that uh, the Sage 5, these are made in uh, Taichung, Taiwan, uh, and just a, yeah, fantastic knife. But the Native 5, if you like a, you know, a little bit smaller, uh, mid back lock knife the native five is is really really hard to beat it's just a uh, super good good in pocket great in hand yeah really awesome knife for sure and made even cooler with the uh, m4 and jade and then we had this uh, this is a super unique not a spider co model that i had ever handled before actually I'll uh, show the paperwork on this one just because it's a super interesting knife. Uh, not really something that would probably be wonderful to EDC uh, uh, for reasons that I'll get into here in just a moment. But if you want to pause right there, check it out. You can see the uh, information about this guy. This thing is called the Paul Wog, uh, and it's unique. There's no, no doubt about that. But the, you know, it's got the, the wire clip, which is going to function well, but you're taking up a tremendous amount of pocket real estate just to put it into perspective. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very odd shaped. So it's going to hang like this in your pocket and the blade, let me see if I can flick it out. There you go. However, it works extremely well in hand. I mean, it's really comfortable in this kind of a grip and would be a great little box opener. Uh, but it's got that uh, ball style lock that's uh, really interesting. Definitely a unique looking knife. And yeah, it'll stand up like that. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a weird one for sure. But, you know, still made with uh, really high end material. CPM M4, Jade G10. Um, and then where was this one? Oh, this one's Seiki City, Japan. Interesting. That might be the first 
uh, Seiki City Knife made an M4. I can't think of another one anyway. Could be wrong on that. But, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So that was another Blade HQ exclusive. So you had these four that are uh, relatively recent drops from Blade HQ. Well, then we got these three. And these are Blade HQ exclusives that are very, very unique. And we're going to dig into them here real quick. Let me move these kind of up out of the way. Actually, there we go. <clears throat> okay. So we're just going to get right into these. These three models right here, uh, I think, is a, is a really cool thing from Blade HQ because they are offering these in what you know pretty much everybody's going to consider to be a budget steel uh you know it's, it's a decent steel but certainly more budget-ish uh steel and <clears throat> these so what we're looking at here is the paramilitary two aluminum scales with a super unique uh, milling pattern going on it almost gives it a wood grain appearance it's really cool to look at they're they're quite beautiful but the blade steel is cts bd1n and because of that these are extremely cool knives they have multiple changes internal which we're going to get into here in a moment uh, and the sale price on these is 140 dollars so I feel like this is bringing really great value. You know, the uh, the uh, Para 3 Lightweight with this exact same steel with FRN scales, those were like, I think those were like 92-ish, 92, 95 bucks, something like that. And, you know, the blade steel performs well. Like I, I have the Para 3 Lightweight in CTS BD1, uh, BD1N, I should say. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it. Like it's a, it's a great steel. Um, you know, it's not on the level of a Maximet or that kind of thing, but uh, but for what it is, it's easy to sharpen, it's corrosion resistant, and it holds up well. So, you know, I feel like this gave a really unique knife, something that's super cool. Uh, it, it just opened the door up for more people to jump in on it at 140 bucks, And I think that's really, really cool. So, let's uh, take a look here. One One thing I wanted to check out, you guys know that uh, I make CMEs. You can pick these up over on our website. <clears throat> but I wanted to check out a few different things. So I do these blue and carbon fiber CMEs. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. The blue and carbon fiber looks awesome on the blue aluminum. Uh, and then we have this purple aluminum. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, the purple Sea Tech, purple Sea Tech looks cool on there for sure. Uh, on the purple aluminum, this one here, um, yeah, is probably Mo Molly's been eyeballing this thing, so it most likely is probably going to stick around. And then you know, of course, on all three of them, the uh, carbon fiber CME is definitely going to look good on there. But uh, yeah, we've got. Let's see what this one looks like. So we got OD green on the green. That doesn't look bad. And then we also have the green C Tech. Oh yeah, that that looks pretty cool. So certainly there are a bunch of options, um, but I, I'm really pumped on the knives themselves. Uh, I I like what Blade HQ did here, and I just think that it's really interesting. Uh, that they chose to go with these, you know, really fancy looking scales uh, with a budget steel choice. So this here is another dealer exclusive. This one's actually from Cutlery Shop, but it just happens to be the only stock standard uh, PM2 that I have uh, here at, right at the moment that has just the standard G10 scales. So I get the I got this one out because. We're going to see what we got here for a weight difference. So this one should be, you know, stock PM2 weight. I can't remember what the steel is. Oh, this one's Rex 45. 
So this is the Cutlery Shop exclusive Rex 45 orange G10 and blue. So we definitely have got hard War of the Worlds going on here. I kind of dig it. You know, if you're a Syracuse, New York fan or whatever, I mean, there's several sports teams that are the blue and orange. Um, yeah, definitely looks pretty cool. But let's see what we've got here for a weight. Basically 3.9 ounces, 3.902. <clears throat> and now let's see what we've got on one of these aluminum. 3.57. So, <clears throat> you know, we're looking at just shy, you know, four tenths of an ounce. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, you can definitely, uh, you can tell the noises that these aluminum models make are very, very cool. Just the way that it sounds opening, let me put it by the mic. It just has kind of a, you know, a ting to it, uh, which is really cool. But let's take a look, see in here. Uh, we got a T8 and a T10. Yeah, that should get us in there. <clears throat> oh, that was a T6. Take apart this purple one since, like I said, this one's probably sticking around here, is my guess. Definitely had some Loctite on there. And not much on the pivot screw. That's interesting. <clears throat> okay. So now let's see if we can, hopefully, we're just gonna lift this off and just kind of pull it around. That's my intention here anyway, because I don't want to mess with the lanyard tube. Oh, it's gonna come off the lanyard tube easily. Look at that. So that's interesting. So the, the lanyard tubes are not pressed into the aluminum like before. Uh, so that's really cool. That's, that was my fear, uh, but they're not. So that's awesome. There you go. <clears throat> so you can see here that we've got just the full on slab aluminum scale and they've milled out a pocket to put that uh, compression lock bar in there. And they've milled some, you know, kind of teeth on there, kind of a cog pattern, uh, just so it locks in there and doesn't move because it's only being held in with one screw. That's totally ac uh, adequate. And yeah, <clears throat> this is kind of interesting. I don't know why that, uh, that must just be for fixturing. Um, and then this one here, the stop pin is actually recessed into the aluminum. Yeah, here I can show you on the other side. I'm not gonna take out all the hardware, but So you can see around the stop pin, there is a recess there. So that's fantastic. So not only is the stop pin being held in by the screw, but it's being supported, you know, most of the way around, more than half of the way uh, by the aluminum here on this side. And then of course, on the other side, it's supported all the way around. So <clears throat> that's really cool. And then on the back, uh, standoff it's shorter and just uh, sits right up against the flat aluminum so there's not a milled pocket there the lanyard tube uh, is no longer press fit uh, which is great uh, but it didn't rattle so the tolerances are good uh, it's being held in there well that's fantastic and i don't know if this is what this is let's see I'll grab a magnet real quick okay so the lanyard tube is either, it's not stainless, and I don't know if it's aluminum or tie. I mean, it's, I'm gonna say, I, I, I feel like that it's too heavy to be aluminum. Um, where's my scale? <clears throat> I, you know, I know you can get a titanium lanyard tube for the PM2 already. Uh, this one might be a little bit different in dimensions, so it might not be a perfect comparison for the weight, but 
of course. So under two grams, you know, it might be aluminum. It's kind of hard to tell with the finish that's on it, um, but it also could be titanium. It's certainly a non-ferrous metal. So, so that's uh, interesting. I, I didn't expect them to have all these changes in here. You know, I was really just kind of expecting these to be aluminum scales over the standard frame, but this is really cool. I, I like the, the changes that they've made here. Um, it definitely feels extremely solid in hand. That part's fantastic. We'll go ahead and put some good slickum on here. It's got <clears throat> kind of a, a grease on there now. Uh, let me grab a Q-tip. Just clean this up a bit. Okay, <clears throat> I was thinking that one of these, I don't know which one it was, I thought one of them had a ceramic uh, detent ball. It sure looked like it, but I could be wrong. Um, yeah, this one certainly, it is a steel uh, detent ball in there, which is fine. All right. Go ahead and reassemble this. We're just going to use some KPL Heavy. Man, I need to get some more of this. This stuff is getting low. Put some on the pivot barrel here. Okay. Now I'm going to put some where the other washer goes. And then I'm also going to put some where the detent rides. And just a little bit down in there. Okay, what do I do with the other washer? Did I drop it? Yes, I did. Okay. I'm just feeling for the die tear on the washer. So the I always put the smoothest side of the washer towards the blade. And I need to put the lanyard tube in. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead and get these screws back in here and then we'll see how we're how well centered we are yeah I'm, I'm really happy with the construction here i like i said i really expected this just to be um you know remade or, or just you know hollowed out uh, milled out scales over the factory uh, factory steel, uh, but they did this once before on the uh, copper PM2s. Uh, they completely changed up the construction, and I like that. I think it, uh, you know, maximizes... Oh boy, I got that pivot way too tight. <laughs> it maximizes, uh, you know, the potential of the material that you're working with, uh, which is fantastic. And... You know, it just makes more sense uh, to have that steel frame in there when you have... Uh, we're going to change this pocket clip around. <clears throat> but it just makes more sense to have the steel frame when you're, you know, dealing with G10. Um, and then when you go to, you know, some type of a metal scale, uh, just let that be the frame and the structure of the knife. So that part is super cool. 
and I'm just going to set this up for right hand carry because that's what my my wife is right handed and like I said I fully see this uh, going in her pocket or purse let's say All right, get these screws done up here. All right, now I'm going to okay. All right, so we're perfectly centered and action is breaking in very quickly. And so I got it just a tiny bit tight, um, but I think that's gonna be good. And it will break in nicely. Oh yeah, right on. Well, so there you go. There's a look at all of the new dealer exclusive stuff from Blade HQ. It's uh, extremely cool. I really dig these aluminum handled PM2s. And then of course, the uh, Sage 5 and M4 is just an absolute beast. And the Native 5 is a great one as well. So here you have the offerings from Blade HQ, all of the dealer exclusives that have come out over the last couple of months. Hopefully you enjoyed that look into these. Uh, we will catch you next time. I'm gone. Peace.